guys to another trading card product review and today I'm going to be doing what is probably my favorite card binder of all time. The Ultra Pro Deck Builders Premium Pro Binder. Now I love this binder and you know what it's actually what I use for my own personal collection. So this is actually my Opus One binder. You'll see it says Ultra Pro right here. Uh, it doesn't actually say Deck Builder Premium anywhere on it, but I guarantee that this is one of the Deck Builder Premiums. It's like one or two years old. So these have been out of stock for a long ass time. I even saw some on eBay going for like $100 plus. And the crazy thing is, I think at least one of them sold, which is nuts because right now you could pick it up on Amazon for maybe like 30 bucks. I paid, I think, $20 each for these, which I think is a steal. I have two of them right here. And I always stock up on them because they seem to sell out quick. Now, one thing I noticed is that this is really hard to get your hands on and suddenly pop back up. If you remember, I always say to keep these sleeve things if you want to put your binders away for long-term storage. So let me show you something here. I dug this one out of my closet so i think the reason it's back in stock is because they must have done a reprint and changed a few things so if you look at the sleeve this one is also ultra pro deck builders premium pro binder but it's a different like sleeve it's like a different color has like red on it i actually think this one looked better but it is pretty much the same thing so what i'm guessing is that they finally remade this product and that's back in stock. So if you see it on Amazon and you're in the market for a new card binder, pick it up. It's probably the best one out there with only the quad row zip folio really being a competitor in this space. So again, this one holds 480 cards. Um, as always, padded cover, acid-free, non-PVC. It's not special anymore because pretty much any trading card binder at this point is acid-free, non-PVC because... Without that, it's pointless because it'll eventually destroy your cards. And nothing really noteworthy on the back, nothing too important. So one thing I noticed, which I actually don't like, is that now this sleeve is fully sealed. Um, back then, I felt like it was kind of like open on one end so you can easily keep it. But uh, let's see if we can open this in a way. I'll get rid of this extra one. Let's see if I can open this in a way where I don't destroy the sleeve and I can kind of try to reuse it. So a lot of times there's like a hole somewhere. Otherwise, I'll just tear it to shreds and whatever. There we go. Kind of just opens up nicely. So if you wanted to put a binder away for long-term storage, put the cards in, slip it back in the sleeve, and just gently tape it shut or something, and you have an airtight or double airtight container. All right. So here we go. The Ultra Pro binder has this really nice material to it. Feels really great. The Quadro is good too, but I think this one looks better. Um, it actually looks the same as my Opus One binder, so I don't think they really changed the formula in any way. Sometimes when they do reprints, they change a little cheap out on stuff. The zipper clearance on this is excellent, but I'll show you that in a second. And let's open this up, kind of take a look at the pages. So again, they always have these little pages in here by one in the middle and end. No, just the end this time. And uh, let's look at the sleeve quality. The sleeve quality is excellent on these. Crystal clear. One thing I noticed with these um, that I didn't like in my previous ones is a lot of times there's some kind of like black film on it. I'm not noticing that here, so maybe they finally fixed that. That was really my only gripe with these binders. I'll just wipe them down quickly with a cloth. Like, it wasn't, like, a huge clob of it or anything, but, um, like, here, looks like there's a little dust on it or something. So that was my only gripe with this binder. But other than that, for me, it's my favorite one. So first, let's look at zipper clearance. Look how much zipper clearance there is. One thing I hate, like, if you look at it just lying flat push it up a little, you'll see that it comes nowhere near the cards. A lot of binders that are lower quality, you'll notice that when it's open, you'll see these things kind of like pushed in. So if you were lazy and just kind of pulled across, you could definitely snag the bottom of the binder. But here, it's just laying flat and still. There's so much clearance between the cards and the zipper, so there's really no chance of damaging your cards. 
The flip side to that is this does tend to be probably the largest binder out there. I think they needed that to give you more clearance, but uh, I'd rather have that than risk damaging my cards doing something stupid like hurriedly closing it. So, we have our favorite cards here. The same experimental cards I use in all of my binder reviews and uh, goes to show you that Final Fantasy card stock is really good. These are all still minty fresh, even though they've been abused. So pretty much, you know, I'm kind of like an OCD kind of person, but really if it's in a binder, even unsleeved, it'll probably be fine long term. If you put it in a penny sleeve, it's almost certainly going to be fine. I'm nuts, so I double sleeve everything in Perfect Fits and Titan Shields. Um, maybe I'll do a re review of those sleeves in the future. They're perfect for long-term collections, maybe not so much for shuffling and stuff. But uh, let's go ahead and do our little classic shape test. So I'm going to go ahead and put it kind of near the middle. And always I do unsleeved, penny sleeved, and then double sleeved. So I'm going to go ahead and slide all these in here. And we'll see how it fares compared to some of the other binders that I've done. Now again, this is a test just to show if cards slide in and out of the binder easily with a lot of movement. Um, obviously this is not a realistic test because uh, most people aren't violently shaking their collections all the time. But what it's meant to simulate is um, for people who actually carry their collections to LGSs and play that way. Uh, I don't know very many people who do that. Normally they bring like pre-constructed decks and deck boxes. But if anyone does do that, it's really to show like how well would it fare in like a backpack bouncing up and down. Let's go ahead and close this up. Don't have to think about the zipper with this binder because the clearance is so good. And let's start shaking. And this is the motion that usually gets them because it's side to side. All right, I think that's a, a pretty reasonable amount of shaking. And perfect. Nothing fell out. If you watch some of my other reviews, sometimes they fall out of the sleeves entirely. A lot of times they just shift around. The closest thing to that that happened here is this poor little echo, but one tiny little push and it's right back in. So these sleeves are amazing. Like you can see they're crystal clear. They hold the cards tight without being too difficult to get in. And uh, pretty much they do a great job of protecting your cards. And also it's very sturdy. So again, to make my review fair, I always use my same uh, reviewing tools. So let's use our Java book, and one of my favorite books, World War Z. Zombies are gonna take over one day, and I'm just gonna use one hand, lift it up, zero flex whatsoever on this binder, even completely empty. It does get a lot more sturdy when it's uh, filled with cards as well. So you'll notice it's not really bending at all. It's perfectly fine. And uh, this is empty. Just to give you an idea of how big it gets when it's full, like this is probably, well, it is the biggest Final Fantasy TCG set. It's Opus 1. Had 216 cards instead of the more normal, like 150-ish for the future sets. And you'll notice that it does get big, like um, maybe the side-to-side -side view would be better. It does get st substantially larger. You can even see that's kind of folding here. But uh, yeah, like this thing expands quite a deal empty it looks like this but really when it's full it looks more like this but these things are indestructible i hold most of my valuable cards in deck builder premiums again the quad row zip folio is also an excellent second option but if you can get a hold of the deck builder premium that's my personal favorite the only thing the Quadro has on it is like the Xeno skin or whatever, which I think is just marketing bullshit and I don't really care about it. But uh, yeah, so when it comes to price, um, I even think that these tend to be cheaper than the Quadro Zipfolios. The prices are all over the place. I don't really understand them. I don't know what the MSRP is, but on Amazon, the lowest I've been able to get these were like $26 to $27. 
but the price seems to fluctuate on like a weekly basis for these binders and I have no idea why. So I'd say if you see these under $30, it's a steal, pick it up. In terms of aesthetics, I'd give it an A. In terms of price, I'd give it an A. In terms of sleeve quality, I'd give it an A. Um, it's most definitely my favorite binder of all time. And if you've been following my channel, you know that because I've made several references to it, but I wasn't able to get a hold of a new one to do a review. But finally, with their restock of the binder, which is different from the original like 10 or so I had, finally I got my hands on them. So I was able to do this review for you guys. If you have any questions on this product, leave it in the comment section below. But I will say that it is my absolute favorite binder, bar none. So that's my official seal of approval. Take that how you may. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this review and unboxing. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.